Hey there, fellow vault dwellers. In today's video, we'll be tasting Joan Soda's original Nuka-Cola Quantum collaboration with Bethesda from the release of Fallout 4, comparing it with the more recent G Fuel collaboration and making it from scratch, courtesy of the Vault Dwellers Cookbook. Full disclosure, I'm more of an Elder Scrolls guy myself. If the decorations or the other videos on my channel didn't give you that idea already. I got super into Fallout 4 around its release, but I just find Skyrim a little more infinitely replayable and generally prefer fantasy settings. However, I still love the alternate history, vintage, post-apocalyptic setting of the Fallout series, and you can't deny that their soundtracks are absolute bangers. I'd kill for a copy of Galaxy News Radio on vinyl, but I'm not about to drop hundreds of bucks on one in the secondary market. Hopefully the Amazon series also means that we're gonna get a repress or something. Speaking of secondary markets and the upcoming Amazon series, I recently got an email about Jones Soda releasing a new Fallout-inspired flavor, Nuka-Cola Victory. I found that mildly interesting and checked out the website only to find it all sold out, which jogged my memory and reminded me that this isn't the first time a Nuka-Cola product by Joan Soda sold out almost immediately. Let me transport you all the way back to 2015, when I was a much more clean-shaven lad. At the time of the release of Fallout 4, like everyone else, I couldn't get my hands on a bottle of Nuka-Cola Quantum despite my best efforts. Originally released in November 2015 as a Target exclusive product, it was a relabeling of Joan's berry lemonade flavor, and its list price was $2.99. Unfortunately, that didn't really matter much because at the time I lived at least an hour from the nearest Target, and apparently it was pretty common for employees to buy them all up before opening on release day, and subsequently put them up for resale on eBay at an egregious 500 plus percent markup. I, of course, being a little hype beast in my own right, despite also being a jobless college student, still caved to the pressure and picked up three bottles at the time. One for me, one for my friend and soon-to-be roommate Cameron, who got me into the series, and one to save for later. This is that bottle. It has somehow survived five moves with various spans of time spent largely forgotten in a box at the back of a dusty cupboard. Somehow it has either evaporated or leaked because it was not that low when I first received it. Before we start sampling old bottles or preparing our own versions, Considering that we've talked about the real-world history of the beverage's release, let's head into a more appropriate setting to consider the in-game history of the beverage. Welcome to Takahashi's Power Noodles. He's letting me use his booth to chat about Nuka-Cola Quantum, since there's a bottle in the background, and it was the quickest spot I could get set up at. At least, I think he said I could use it. Hey, Takahashi. Yes. Okay, so he was actually just asking if I wanted dinner, but I don't think he'll mind our use of the booth still. For the in-game history of the glowing blue beverage, let's read a little on my janky homemade pit boy Nuka-Cola Quantum was created in October 2076 by the Beverage Year Division at Nuka World. It was a byproduct of Project Cobalt, which began in 2076 when Nuka-Cola Corporation engaged in weapons research under U.S. military sponsorship. The team found that a strontium-90 isotope derivative, originally developed for military ordnance, created a bright blue glow that worked well as a food additive when adjusted for consumption. The lead beverageer, Rex Meacham, gave the new drink formula its distinctive name. Live testing of the drink, codenamed Sea Lion, occurred at other regional facilities. Experimentation with other isotopes showed that none worked as effectively or as safely as strontium-90. Initial testing with the drink led to significant health problems and even deaths among taste testers, but waivers allowed the company to avoid litigation, and adjustments created a final product with only mild side effects. It ultimately passed inspections supervised by the Food and Drug Association, and was marketed in the fourth quarter of 2077 as a new flavor of Nuka-Cola with twice the calories, twice the carbohydrates, twice the caffeine, and twice the taste. The flavor itself was modified via an 18th ingredient, 
pomegranate fruit flavoring. However, Quantum's appearance and the added isotope were controversial, and the public was divided on the drink. It was released as part of a limited test run, and only the Nuka-Cola plant in Washington, D.C. produced it at a commercial scale before the Great War. Nuka-Cola Quantum was officially released to the public at the same time as the Great War, and so the soda is incredibly rare in the wasteland, with many bottles found in trucks that were shipping the product. Consuming a bottle provides 400 HP and 100 AP compared to the original Nuka-Cola's lower 20 HP and 10 AP. Although, interestingly, they both provide plus 5 rads. Not too encouraging for our health as we get ready to taste a decade-old bottle of the stuff. Speaking of, we might as well crack into this one to see what we're working with. I'll spare you the drama of saving this for the end of the video, and we'll just start with the old stuff. Wish me luck. It's got a little cotton candiness on the nose, oddly. That tastes so watery. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. It's so weak. I guess that kind of makes sense. Something happened in there, but that just tastes like you left some blue cotton candy in a water bottle and forgot about it. <laughs> I don't think I really want to drink much more of that, just in case, but I got the taste. It's not, not where it should be, but luckily I do have a fresh bottle of Jones Soda's regular berry lemonade flavor. While it lacks the Fallout branding, it is what the original tasted like, so it serves as a better control for our tasting here. I thought about buying a newer bottle of the official Quantum, as it looks like they've made new batches, but it clocks in at around 30 bucks for a two-pack, and considering that the only true difference between it and the Jones Berry Lemonade is the branding, and I already have my old bottle here, I decided it wasn't worth the extra 26 bucks. It was a twist off. I really didn't need to pop the top like that, but I read the cap as I was doing it. And this is coming through way more bubbly. We are definitely gonna be a little better off with this one. Oh yeah, that smells like a, a fun blueberry, blue raspberry lemonade vibe. That's a treat, man. That is delicious. I don't really know what flavors went into it other than berry and lemonade. It's missing a key component from the history of Nuka-Cola Quantum, according to what we read from the wiki. But fear not. Now that we've tasted both an extremely old bottle of the stuff and a more recently produced product of the original flavor, let's try the more recent G Fuel release. Which I will have you know, and am very excited about this myself, one of the flavorings in it is pomegranate. So props to them for paying attention to uh, that aspect of it. And since the instructions are incredibly simple, I'll just make some right now. All we gotta do is add one scoop to 12 to 16 ounces of water, then shake. And there we have it, our Nuka-Cola Quantum by G Fuel. I'll pour a little into a little tasting glass here. And color-wise, it looks closer to our sad little Nuka-Cola bottle over here than the, the deeper blue of the Jones, but let's see how she tastes. It's got the same like pre-workout kind of vibe that most G Fuel does. You're getting a lot of those B vitamins and whatever, all those stimulants. While the Jones is a little more syrupy and berry forward, this is much more citric. But because it's not, it's made with just regular water, it's not carbonated, you get a little more fun bite with the Jones versus the G Fuel, and it ends up being much closer to our sad little friend over here. Which, for color purposes, I'm gonna just fill this up the rest of the way with our sad old bottle of Nuka-Cola Quantum. I just think that that way we can see the color and I'm not gonna drink it, so. We'll just have a good baseline there if it shows up on the green screen, we'll see. So I kind of want this to be a little closer to the Jones Soda as far as bubbliness goes. So I actually want to carbonate this. So let's bust out the drink mate. I'm not sponsored by them, but I would sure as heck love to be because the bottle release valve on this means that you can actually carbonate things other than water unlike with other carbonating products out there. I'll put a link in the description so you can check them out for yourself. Who knows, maybe someday I'll get sponsored. 
We'll just add our G Fuel Nuka Cola Quantum to our Drinkmate bottle. I do want us to have a tasting cup of the flat as a control, so I'll leave that in. And then we just push the button until it starts hissing out of the top, like that. Then we we'll wanna give it a good shake to really keep those carbon dioxide molecules in there, get them all evenly distributed. It'll also probably help the drink dissolve a little more, which I won't complain about. It's done. Whoop, very foamy. Holy cow. All right, there we have it our bubbly G Fuel. It's like the little bubbles are hitting my nose, so it's hard to get in there for a whiff. But uh, you know, it's gonna be about the same smell. It's just more intense. Personally, I like that more when it's bubbly. I think that the bubbles add something, you know? It adds, okay? It adds. Yeah, back to back. It's kind of night and day, and the bubbles are way more fun. Gives it a little more of a bite, a little more, almost like a little more acidity too. I thought about recarbonating this one, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm, I'm, I'm over the old bottle. <laughs> so now that we've tasted the old bottle, the still available Jones Soda flavor, and the G Fuel in both flat and carbonated forms, let's crack out the Vault Dweller's official cookbook. Nuka-Cola Quantum. Our original Nuka-Cola Quantum recipe needed a few more exotic ingredients, but as these are required for vault power and coolant operations, we've decided to include neon blue food dye in all kitchens instead. This will give you a special of plus one intelligence for 30 minutes. It's an easy recipe to make, takes about 12 hours, 30 minutes of cook time, serves 15 to 20, and pairs well with Mississippi Quantum Pie. And while I read the instructions to you, please enjoy this footage I found on my Pip-Boy of Nuka World employees making Nuka-Cola Quantum. You'll need one cup of water, two cups of sugar, the zest and juice of one lemon, the zest and juice of one lime, two tablespoons of fruit punch, two tablespoons of pomegranate juice, one teaspoon of citric acid, and five drops of neon blue food dye. To make Nuka-Cola Quantum Syrup, combine the water, sugar, lemon zest, lime zest, fruit punch, and pomegranate juice in a medium saucepan and place over medium-high heat. Whisk until the sugar has dissolved and then bring to a boil. Reduce the heat to low and simmer for 10 minutes. Remove from the heat and strain into an airtight container. Add the lime and lemon juice. Mix in the citric acid and food dye. Once cooled, cover and store in the refrigerator for at least 12 hours and up to two weeks. To make an ice cold glass of Nuka-Cola Quantum, combine one cup seltzer water, ice, and nine tablespoons of Nuka-Cola Quantum syrup, then stir together. Which, as an aside, for one glass, one cup of water, <laughs> ice and nine tablespoons of Nuka-Cola quantum syrup. I don't know like what they're thinking, but one glass cannot, I mean, that's a big glass. <laughs> to put it in perspective, nine tablespoons is like a little over half a cup. So that's a cup and a half of liquid. So it's, it needs a, a big cup. <laughs> All the ones I, I brought are smaller. So let me grab a bigger glass. <laughs> Hopefully this one will get us right. And here it is, our Nuka-Cola Quantum Syrup. I'm gonna use our, our G Fuel friend here as a stand for my cup. And I'm gonna put my nine tablespoons into the cup to show you how unnecessary it is to have nine tablespoons in one cup. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And we are right around half a cup. <laughs> it's a lot. I'll just add it here to our glass. I'm not sure that one cup of bubbly water is gonna fit in that, but we'll see. I carbonated this with the drink mate before we got started. Getting us right up to one cup here. There's a 
a high likelihood we're gonna have to move this to a bigger glass because I don't think that's fitting in there. So, oops. <laughs> we're gonna break out the, the old trusty Scotch Ale glass, which, you know, has its uses. It comes in handy and it looks kind of like alchemy. So I guess I'm not really complaining. I'm gonna try to add it to this, but I just don't have a lot of hope here. I doubted, Never mind. We're good. <laughs> I am gonna stir this up though, cause we got a whole lot of syrup hanging out on the bottom. All right, I'm gonna call that pretty mixed up. And I suppose I have a little room to add some ice. All right, now that we got some hand flavored ice in there, let's give it a shot. That is intense. Really, really prominently lemon and lime zest. It's got a brilliant acidity. Arguably a little too sweet for my liking, but I also don't mind a whole lot. It's pretty good, all things considered. It's the first time I've made like a soda from scratch. It's pretty dang good. The only thing that I think would make it better, again, is more carbonation. I do think it would be kind of fun to mix the G Fuel one and this one from the cookbook because what the cookbook one misses, I mean, besides all of the ingredients that are gonna kill you, <laughs> there's no caffeine in the cookbook version and the lore page did say that it was supposed to have twice the caffeine. So while we might not get all the way there, I do think by combining the G Fuel and the cookbook version, we might get the best of both worlds. We've got the pomegranate in both of them. And by kind of combining the caffeinated elements from G Fuel and then the craft flavor of the cookbook version, I think we could achieve something very beautiful. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna try to go like half and half with it. So I'm gonna do about half a cup of the G Fuel one in this. Although we might be going a little nuts if we double carbonate this one, that might be egregious. So maybe we don't do that. Also my little cocktail strainer here is not going to fit over this to strain the ice out. So I'm gonna be mad scientist here. Transfer to the other glass. I'm really overthinking this. Strain out the ice all the way up to one cup. I'm gonna pour it back into this glass and we're gonna see what the blend tastes like. That's good. These are all a little too sweet for, for my particular palate, but you get what you sign up for. <laughs> what I think I'll do is add a little bit more of just this bubbly water to our blend there until I'm happy with it. Just cutting back on that intensity and sweetness. I really should have measured that. Oops. I'm gonna say that was about quarter of a cup. So we're gonna add another quarter of a cup. Stir things up here. I think that's perfect. So roughly an extra half a cup of bubbly water and a combination of the G Fuel carbonated as well. I think it's gonna hit what I would consider the most ideal and peak Nuka-Cola Quantum in terms of flavor and lore accuracy as far as what has been put out in collaboration with Bethesda goes. So I think that works. I do have one more thing here. So when I mentioned that I bought three bottles of the old Nuka-Cola Quantum at the beginning of the video, my first bottle that I enjoyed with Cameron, I saved after all these years and it is, I mean, I saved it in a clean and empty state. And to be extra safe, I washed it again and then used some star sand to like really sanitize it. The bottle itself is looking a lot cleaner. <laughs> than that one. So I think what I want to do here is pour our ideal mixture of Nuka-Cola Quantum into this empty bottle and then this can just be my official version of Nuka-Cola Quantum. <laughs> and we're looking at about one full cup. And we're a little low, of course we are. And there we have it, the official Nick's version of Nuka-Cola Quantum that takes a combination of the different versions that Bethesda has put out and makes the most lore-friendly but also realistic version of the beverage. <laughs> there's some caffeine, there's some sugar, it's got everything that you need minus the strontium 90. And that's dang good. To fully complete the effect, let me bust out the old trusty Pip-Boy and see if I remember how to do it on these old versions. 
the definitive Nuka-Cola Quantum. You're welcome. I was honestly a little skeptical of the official Vault Dwellers cookbook because I thought that the pomegranate juice and fruit punch in that recipe were going to darken it a lot more than it did and give it more of a ruddy hue, but it ended up being very blue. That blue food dye definitely does the trick. And when diluted with some bubbly water, it ends up looking very much like the bottle in game. It wasn't enough to throw it off. Either way, there you have it. Roughly six different forms of Nuka-Cola Quantum. The branded Jones Soda release, Jones Soda's actual release that is just the exact same flavor but without the fun branding, the G Fuel collaboration that definitely tastes better carbonated, and the Fallout cookbook version that I think is the best tasting of them all, but then the super ultra definitive version of Nuka-Cola Quantum, combining everything that we know about it into what I consider the closest thing to what it probably tastes like. I definitely wouldn't recommend hunting down an original bottle of the first release, but if you really want the look of it, the $30 two-pack does look cool. Sometimes Bethesda Gear puts out rocket-shaped bottles on their website, and I thought about getting one for this specific video, but unfortunately, they do say not to consume anything out of them, which would defeat the entire purpose of this whole thing. So, <laughs> in lieu of that, your best bet is getting the Jones Soda branded version, if you want to actually drink out of it. The Berry Lemonade Jones Soda flavor is a good option to get that original flavor without paying out the wazoo. While the G Fuel collaboration is interesting in its own right, and is the only one present that actually contains caffeine, and tastes even better carbonated. The cookbook one is fantastic though as well, and combining the two or three will get you everything you're looking for in a Nuka-Cola Quantum. As always, you can pick up a copy of the Vault Dweller's official cookbook at the link in the description. Now, let's head back out to the real world to talk once again about the elusive new flavor from Jones Soda and Bethesda. Given that Nuka-Cola victory has followed the same trajectory of hype to immediately out of stock, perhaps I'll make a video on how to make it yourself, taking the Vault Dweller's cookbook production style into account. Leave a comment if that's something you'd like to see from me. I won't be able to get it out by the release of the show, clearly, but I might just have another video on the other flavors of Nuka-Cola from the book in the works. Lemonade or fruit punch or something? That's just really sweet. Does this have emergency in it? No. <laughs> what is that? It tastes like these zinc tablets. This one has a strong vitamin C smell. It was fine, but this one's sweeter. Mm. I like this one the most so far. It feels like a good mixture of those two. Why does it look like that? <laughs> Is this a lot of lime juice? Actually, I actually think I like this one the best. Nice. Berry lemonade Jones soda. That is the G Fuel Nuka-Cola Quantum. This one is just the G Fuel, but carbonated. Huh. I guess I can still smell it, but maybe it's just- Better. Less, less strong or something, I don't know. And then that one is the Vault Dweller's cookbook version of Nuka Cola. Oh, so this is the one you made? Yes. I like it the best. This is a combination of all three. That's really good. I would drink this at the lake. What about in a post-apocalyptic wasteland? Only if it glows. I'll get to work on that. Perfect. Gotta find me some Strontium 90. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> While I've been rather dormant on the gaming channel of late, I did recently get laid off. So I think it would be kind of fun to do a Fallout 4 stream with the goal of completing the Nuka World DLC. I make no promises about my proficiency at Fallout games though. If you want to watch me dust off my power armor, let me know. Beyond the vintage apocalypse landscape, I also have another Elder Scrolls oriented video coming out this month on a particularly interesting tincture. I really don't want to give too much away about it, but let's just say it's been a much requested subject by longtime viewers of this channel. Subscribe here to see what it is and or for some additional Nuka-Cola recipes. 
or subscribe here so you don't miss the gaming channel streams, or tap here to watch me talk about the comparisons of Coca-Cola and Fat Tire changing their recipes, or tap here to check out my recent video on the dark elf beverage Sudorama. Thanks for watching and see you soon.